Hi everyone, I'm Lynn Prowse Bishop and this is the Virtual Business Show. Today's show isn't a comfortable topic for many people, but it's an important one. Today, I'll be talking about your digital footprint. It's not unusual that with the passing of someone close to us, or when we hear of the passing of someone famous, for example, that we begin to think of our own lives and make some reassessments and adjustments. It might prompt us to check insurance policies, health fund coverage, even prompt us to make a will if we don't already have one. This got me thinking. It's one thing to get your material affairs in order, but what do you do with your digital footprint once you've passed? We hear a lot in business about risk management, succession planning, ensuring your partner has access to your passwords, insurance policies and so on. Some businesses even write a plan for what to do in the event of illness or accident. It became apparent to me how very important this is for businesses based on a partnership when a very dear friend of my husband was killed in a bus accident. This couldn't be planned for, of course, but because it hadn't even been thought about and he was the partner instrumental in bringing in new business, things looked pretty bleak for a while as the business really went into a tailspin without him. How many businesses, though, or individuals for that matter, who do have such a succession plan or risk mitigation plan include information about what to do with their online presence? So their website, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, Instagram, Pinterest. The list is endless. And who knows what's going to happen in the future? What other social media applications and spaces become available to us as technology changes? Your social media accounts store years of memories, pictures, data and activities. So it seems that now lawyers are advising people to think about including a clause in their will about what should be done with social media accounts on their demise. According to New Scientist, we're creating digital legacies for ourselves every day, even increasingly every minute. More than a quarter of a million Facebook users are estimated to die this year alone, with the information about themselves that we record online being the sum of our relationships, interests and beliefs. It's who we are. It's been called our digital soul. And with the way we can now easily and cheaply store our information in the cloud, our digital souls are truly immortal. Given we've talked in other podcasts about reputation and the tendency for people to perhaps not make the best choices when it comes to sharing in the social media space, is this immortality really such a good idea? Apparently there are two schools of thought, the preservationists, who believe we should keep this information for posterity, and the deletionists, who believe it's important the internet learns how to forget. Again, according to New Scientist, in 2011, two-thirds of all Americans stored personal data on a distant server in the cloud, while nearly half were active on social networks. You can imagine that with the always-on connectivity of today, this number is far higher, and companies like Google and Facebook are dedicated to storing as much data for as long as possible. We already know that marketing companies can record our browsing history and search requests in order to target personalised advertising and offers. Once, all this personal information used to be written down. Now, with our reliance on digital storage, particularly via free sites like Facebook and Instagram, and our ability with iPhones to take snapshots of moments in our lives and instantly upload them, the question now being asked is, are we doing enough to preserve this information? As mentioned in other podcasts, users don't own Facebook, Flickr, Twitter, and other spaces. They could be taken down at any moment. Remember GeoCities? What will happen to your digital memories then? So I'll ask you to think about just how much you rely on social media and cloud storage for your precious memories and life stories, and perhaps rethink the reliance we place on the longevity of these technologies to preserve it. Now, assuming they'll be around for a little while, though, what are some ideas for preserving your digital legacy or footprint? Facebook's policy is that a profile can be deleted at the request of an immediate family member or memorialised so that others can post tributes to them on the wall. You can see more information about this at Facebook's blog or search for memorial pages in the help section. Similarly, immediate family members or a person authorised to act on behalf of the user's estate can deactivate the person's Twitter account. In these instances, you might want to make arrangements for the death certificate to be available to your executors so that they can prove it if they need to do these sorts of things. Make a list of all your online accounts and notify your executor or partner of those. You might keep this list together with access passwords with your will at your lawyer's office. At the very least, let your partner know where they can find them. They'll have enough to deal with in the event of your death without having to try and remember every online space you've inhabited during your life. 
The same applies to your website, include information about who's hosting the site, contact details, the domain name registry, even the expiring information, so that your family can get in touch with the right people with the least amount of fuss. If you haven't thought about it before, now might be the time, before something happens or you fall ill. It's something none of us like to think about, but, as the saying goes, none of us are getting out of this alive, so making things as easy as possible for those left behind should be your focus. And perhaps while you're at it, give some thought to how else you might be able to preserve your life's moments for posterity, which doesn't rely so heavily on third-party cloud providers. I'm Lynn Prowse-Bishop. Thanks so much for listening. Thank you.